Lesson 2.4, Estimate Products by Rounding. We can estimate products by rounding the greater factor to the nearest higher place, then multiply using mental math. 4 times 175, we round 175 to 200 and think 4 times 2 hundreds. That's equal to 8 hundreds, so our estimate is 800. We can also estimate by finding two numbers that the exact number should be between. For 4 times 175, 175 is in between 100 and 200. If we round 175 to 100, 4 times 100 is equal to 400. And if we round it to 200, 4 times 200 is equal to 800. So the exact answer is estimated to be between 400 and 800. By using the maximum and minimum numbers, such as 200 and 100, by rounding to the next higher 100 and the next lower 100, our 400 to 800 represents a range of possible estimates. Our estimate for the product of 4 times 175 was 400 to 800. By rounding down the 175 to 100, that would be the next lowest number, it's equal to 400. 100 is less than 175, so the exact answer will be greater than 400 because we rounded down we know the answer is going to be above a 400. It's going to be greater than 400. And by going to the next highest number, the next higher number, 200, 4 times 200 is equal to 800. 200 is greater than 175. So the exact answer will be less than 800. It's going to be in between 400 and 800. So it's going to be greater than 400 and less than 800. Because 175 is closer to 200 than it is to 100, the exact answer will be closer to 4 times 200 equals 800 than it would be to 4 times 100 equals 400. It's going to be in between 400 and 800, but it's going to be closer to the 800 because we got the 800 by doing 4 times 200, and 175 is closer to 200, so it's going to be closer to that estimate. And we can estimate a product to find if an answer is reasonable and makes sense. Bob's goat eats about 37 pounds of food each week. And Bob wrote the equation 4 times 37 to find how much goat food he needs for four weeks. Is 140 pounds reasonable? So notice the word about. And the word about tells us this should be an estimate. We can round and estimate. 37 is between 30 and 40. If we multiply 4 times 30, it's equal to 120. And 4 times 40 is equal to 160. Here's 120. Here's 160. Look, 140 is right in the middle. So 140 is a reasonable estimate because it's between 120 and 160. We can use the associative property to help us multiply an estimate. 4 times 200 is equal to 4 times 2 times 100. That's the 200, isn't it? We can regroup this and put the parentheses around the 4 and the 2 and do 4 times 2 times 100 because the associative property states that we can regroup factors and get the same product. Now we have 8 times 100, which is equal to 800. And remember, when multiplying tens, hundreds, and thousands, or even larger place values, the number of zeros in the factors will be the number of zeros in the product. We learned about this in the last video, 2.3, which is linked in the description. If we're multiplying 4 times 20, we have a 0 in the factors here, 
So we think four times two, which is eight, and we put one zero in the product. For multiplying four times 200, we multiply the basic fact four times two, which is eight. We have two zeros in the factors. We put two zeros in the product. Same with 2,000. There's three zeros in these factors, so we have three zeros in our product. And it's how many zeros are in the factors. So we have 40 times 20. We can do the basic facts of 4 times 2, which is 8. We have two zeros in the factors, which means there's two zeros in the product. Is the estimate reasonable? Mr. Lee sold about 22 apples each day for a week. And he estimated that he sold about 160 apples. Is his estimate reasonable? So remember, one week is equal to seven days. So if he sold about 22 apples for a week, he sold 22 apples every day for seven days. So we're gonna be multiplying times seven. And we can estimate by rounding to the next lowest, the next highest number, to see if 160 is between those estimates. We can round 22 to 20. That's the next lowest. 7 times 20 is equal to 140. And we can round up to 30. 7 times 30 is equal to 210. Now 22 is closer to 20 than it is to 30. So his estimate should be closer to this 140, this 140, because it's closer to the 20, than to the 210. And it is. His estimate was 160, and here's 140 on a number line. Here's 210 way over here. It is closer to 140. So it is reasonable. It's a reasonable estimate. Alicia makes 10 bracelets a day. She sells her bracelets for $9 each. Alicia thinks she can make about $700 if she sells 120 bracelets. Is this reasonable? So the first thing we need to do is be careful of information we don't need. We can remove unnecessary information from this word problem. Can you find unnecessary information? If she's selling her bracelets for $9 each and she sells 120 of them, we don't need to know that she makes 10 bracelets a day. That's unnecessary information. But we do need to know that she sells them for $9 each and that she thinks if she sells 120 of them, she'll make about $700. So we can estimate by rounding the 120 to the next lowest, which would be 100, then the next highest number, which would be 200. We want to estimate 9 times 120, $9 times 120. We do $9 times 100, which is equal to $900, and $9 times 200 is equal to 1,800. Well. She thought she'd make about $700. That's not between 900 and 1,800. So her estimate is not reasonable. It's too low. She underestimated the amount. There are two hiking trails, Trail A and Trail B. Trail A is 223 yards long. Trail B is 289 yards long. If Bob walks to the end of a trail and back on Monday and Tuesday, which trail did Bob walk to go about 900 yards in all? So we can estimate by rounding. He walks to the end of the trail and back for two days. That means he goes one of these distances, then that distance back. So that's two lengths. And he does it on Tuesday, so that's another two lengths. So we're gonna multiply times four. We're gonna do four times 223 compared to four times 289. We think four times 200 is equal to 800, and four times 300, because we can round this up to 300, is equal to 1,200. 
So, which trail did Bob walk to go about 900 yards in all? Well, 900 is closer to 800 than it is to 1,200. So Bob must have hiked trail A. It's the closer estimate. We can predict whether an exact answer will be less than or greater than an estimate. Mr. Lee sold 178 pounds of plums at $3 per pound. He estimates that about $600 worth of plums were sold. Is Mr. Lee's estimate less than or greater than the exact amount? Well, if he rounds 178 to 200, then $3 times 200 is equal to $600. But by rounding up, because 200 is more than 178, he overestimated the amount. Mr. Lee's estimate is greater than the exact amount. We can add 178 three times and get 534, so we can see 600 is an overestimate from the exact amount. $3 times 178, we can look at it as $178 plus $178 plus $178, which is equal to $534. Now, if he had rounded 178 down to 100, he would have had $3 times 100, which is equal to 300. Then he would have underestimated the amount. But he actually estimated greater than the exact amount, didn't he, by estimating $600. An estimate is a prediction because it helps us to determine if our answer is correct. For some problems, it's helpful to make two estimates. An estimate that is less than the exact answer by rounding to the next lowest number, and an estimate that is greater than the exact answer by rounding to the next highest number. And the exact answer will be between these two estimates. He sold 178 pounds of plums at $3 per pound by going to the lowest number, 100, for the 178. We got $300 for an estimate. By rounding the 178 to 200, we got $600 for an estimate. On a number line, here's the $300 and here's the $600. So we know the exact answer is in between here. Here is his underestimate that's too low and his overestimate that's too high. But because 178 is really closer to 200 than 100, the exact answer is closer to his overestimate of $600. So remember we can estimate by finding two numbers that the exact answer should be between. In our next lesson 2.5, we're going to use the distributive property to help us multiply two-digit numbers by one-digit numbers. And I hope I'll see you there. Have a wonderful day, and please hit the like button. Bye.